Okay, just a real quick update for anyone on the channel who's kind of following along with my uh, 22RE stuff here. Uh, happy to announce that I got the cylinder head bolted back onto the block, new head gasket, everything nice and clean, ceramic pistons, all that stuff that you've seen in the previous videos. Um, this video, I wanted to uh, kind of address putting the, the cam, I guess timing the cam on the motor when you put the cylinder head on, but you're not, you know, uh, doing anything with, with the, the valve cover, or the timing chain cover rather, sorry. So this is something, you know, I've, I've taken the motor apart a couple of times now, and you know, obviously every time you have to time the cam. And as you can see here, let me get my flashlight out of my pocket again here. As you can see here, I have uh, the LC Engineering uh, adjustable cam sprocket. Uh, as mentioned in a previous video, I upgraded with some ARP uh, distorted thread, uh, M6, uh, six millimeter by one uh, nuts. But the gear allows you to rotate the the outer part where you can see the etching and the, the LC logo uh, relative to the camshaft itself. So you, you've got about 20 degrees of camshaft uh, adjustment which translates into a full 40 degrees of adjustment uh, on crankshaft degrees because it's, it's uh, obviously it's a two to one ratio. So uh, I've got the head bolted down. You can you can see I'm using the ARP uh, head bolt studs there, uh, head studs. Uh, I I torqued the head down to 75 foot pounds, and in the process, uh, of course, I needed to do the rough timing on the uh, camshaft. Now I still need to adjust the valves with the correct lash and then go do the final timing. And, and you may have seen in my other videos, I'm, I'm running a slightly different uh, timing, about five degrees uh, retarded on the, on the uh, Pro EFI cam from LC Engineering, which is a, a, a web cam, uh, it's ground by web. And uh, the cam from LC Engineering and web, which is a, it's a custom grind web does for LC Engineering, uh, you know, no big, no big secret there. And um, LC has the a little advanced ground into the intake, uh, I believe it is, or into the cam, I guess, in general. And so to counter that, I ordered the cam gear here so that I can retard the cam and get a little, little bit more top end breathing uh, for the motor. But in any event, the kind of what I wanted to cover here was the steps to properly time your cam when you're just slapping the cylinder head back on. Because it, it, it gets a little tricky and there's a couple things you gotta kind of be aware of. Now, uh, LC Engineering has a very good uh, instructional video on their YouTube channel and I will link it in the description at the very top of the description so that you can, you can see kind of how to time the motor. Um, but just in, in practical terms, you know, let's say you pull your cylinder head off your 22RE and then you're like, oh brother, uh, I gotta get the head back on and I wanna make sure the camshaft is timed, but I, I'm not gonna pull the timing, uh, you know, cover off. So uh, is that even possible? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's possible. And it's not really all that hard. So the basic deal is this. When you got the head off, you need to uh, get the motor back, obviously, at top dead center. And you can do that with a dial indicator. You know, I, I have a dial indicator that I put on and checked it with, you know, make sure. But uh, this mark will get you right, pretty much right on the money. Uh, uh, and for the purposes of getting the cam dialed in, it's... It's, uh, if you line up that mark with the time and coverage uh, mark, it's, it's plenty accurate. I mean, even, even a one degree move rotation either way on your crankshaft 
uh, is going to be quite visible that you're you're not right on the money. Um, so once you have the motor at top dead center on piston number one, then you uh, need to get the cylinder head on. But the big issue is you you don't want uh, the chain dropping down and having a kind of one of its links kind of get you know cattywacus relative to the, the the sprocket on the bottom of the crank. So how do you do that? Uh, well, you have to kind of pull the chain up, and what I do is I I kind of pull it up, and then I initially uh, wire tie it uh, with a nylon wire, wire tie on each side of the um, the uh, the timing chain guides, and then that allows me to kind of get the chain pulled up. Now in before you, before I do that, I pull the chain up with one hand, and then I rotate the motor over with another hand and let the chain kind of go through my hand so that I know there's no bound up links down there. So once everything is rotating freely, get the motor to top dead center, and then I kind of pull the chain up without the sprocket in the mix and the cylinder head is off and all that, and I just kind of quickly uh, nylon wire tie it over to the edges of the uh, timing chain guides. Okay, so at that point, you got to grab your uh, your cam gear, whether you're using you know an adjustable one or a factory one, and all you got to really know is that this dowel in the cam has got to be right up and down at the twelve o'clock position. Now that's going to put the. Let me grab the factory gear back here. So on the factory gear, you can see that the timing hole mark that they have here is a little off from where your dowel pin goes. But you, you, unless you're doing the routine where you have a fresh timing chain and the cover is off and you've got the links, you know, the shiny link on a brand new, you know, timing chain that you can see and then you put this, one of the links on this dot and then the other one on the dot on the chain on the gear on the bottom of uh, on your crankshaft nose then you can kind of just forget about these dots that that's only when you're building the motor on a stand and everything's visible what we're doing here is we've got you know we're working kind of in the blind we can't really even see the gear on the nose of the crank uh, because it's all covered by the chaining timing chain cover and the front damper and so forth. So we just kind of got to go by feel and make sure that, that the chain is properly looped around there. And when you're doing that, what you're concerned with is not this dot. You're concerned with the dowel in the front of the cam and how this gear lines up with that. So if we go back over to the, uh, the motor here, the name of the game is Put the piston number one at top dead center and then the dowel in the cam goes straight up and down at noon. Now you've previously got your chain nylon wire tied to the uh, timing chain guides so that it doesn't collapse back down into your front timing chain cover. So uh, at this point what you got to do is you kind of got to get your timing gear in there because once you put the cylinder head on you, you're not going to really be getting this gear down in there real well. So you want to kind of get the timing, uh, the cam gear in under the chain. And then you pull it up and you can kind of see like, okay, based on where I have my teeth, you know, uh, intersecting with the chain where's this dowel gonna be and if you're off one tooth you'll kind of see oh, okay that dowel's not at noon straight up and down it's kind of a little over that way or it'll be a little over that way so it, it's relatively simple to get the gear positioned in the chain while you're pulling it up and while the chain's being held uh, by nylon wire ties such that this dowel is straight up and down now the other thing to know and to really understand is that 
at that point, you're not getting this gear up onto the nose of the of your cam when you put the head on. And why is that? Well, the reason is, is because down here, there's a timing chain tensioner that's pushed all the way out and it, and it operates on oil, hydraulic oil pressure. So the residual pressure and the fact that there's a little spring in there pushing that out is kind of throwing your game off a little bit. And that little kind of pushing out and pulling down the length of your chain is going to keep, is going to make it seem like you can't get the uh, sprocket onto the cam. Now what I use over here is I, I use this. So here's how I do it. I put this little ground down, this is just an old Toyota head bolt. I put this little ground down head bolt, which I hacksawed off and you know, use my bench grinder to round over. I usually put this in the, the number, I guess it would be what, uh, eight, they call it here, eight or 10, whichever one it is here. Yeah, eight. Uh, I usually put it in this one or this one, and I use this pin to help me guide the cylinder head on. And then what I do is I unscrew this and I, and I use the, the smooth end as my lever to pull up the, 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 the cam sprocket and ride it on in to the dowel. And the force of push, of levering up the cam gear will depress that, uh, the tensioner. And you'll hear it kind of go and, and release. Once that happens, you then you've got the slack to get your cam gear up, okay? And you can kind of wedge it in. And of course, this, this bolt will be out of the way and stuff. You don't use that till later. Once you get the cam gear up and on the nose of the cam, you want to verify that this dowel is, is straight up and down. And then you're still at top dead center. And if you've got those two things happening your motor's timed. Now, timed as far as being able to rotate it over. So you, and also don't forget, you, you, when you have it top dead center here and top dead center on the dowel for the, the cam, you know, both uh, both valves will be closed. So you, you won't be sitting up on any lobes of the cam. You'll be sitting on the backside of the cam because you're at top dead center of the uh, power stroke, you know, uh, the compression stroke. So if you're timing your cam, for example, and you're like, well, you know, I want my intake to open at, you know, I don't know, 10 degrees or five degrees before top dead center, you got to rotate 360 on the, on the crank to get you to that point to where you can uh, start timing your cam. And you can kind of see, and I've covered it in other videos here, but you, you can kind of see I've got my my camshaft timing stuff here. So, you know, running the, the cam five degrees retarded. And then here's the specs based on the, the grind from LC Engineering. Uh, and then, you know, I'm varying things a little bit. So then I'm looking basically when I time in my cam, you, you know, using my dial indicator, I'm going to throw this guy here on, let's say, uh, you know, the exhaust valve. And then I want to see that the exhaust valve uh, is 50 thousandths away from seating when I'm right at top dead center. And then, and then you know, verify that the intake valve starts to crack open uh, four degrees after top dead center. And, you know, you, almost, you don't really, at least for this cam, it's not crazy, the timing's not crazy enough that you need to uh, throw a degree wheel even on. You, you you get very accurate timing just based off top dead center and estimating four degrees because, you know, four degrees on the, the front damper is just, you know, that, that much movement. So, you know, you you can kind of get, get things dialed in. You do need a dial indicator, though, to, to properly time in the cam. And you also need to adjust, uh, obviously, the lash because uh, if if when you have the rocker arm, uh, ratio pushing on your valve uh, 
and your and your lash is off uh, a couple thousandths uh, of an inch that's going to obviously manifest itself as a couple thousand inches uh, off on your on, when you're timing the cam so you got you know you got to make sure you you understand kind of the theory of of timing your cam and stuff but for those just wondering like hey uh, what is it going to even be possible to get my cylinder head and my cam stuff back on or do I need to pull off my timing chain cover the answer to that riddle is no you don't need to pull off your timing cover you don't need to have access to the gear on the, the nose of the crank you as long as you can get the motor to top dead center uh, on piston number one all you really got to concern yourself with is getting this sprocket up on the uh, cam and and just make sure that that dowel is 100% straight up and down at, at, at the 12 o'clock position. Now in my video, you'll see it looks like it's a little over and that's that's by virtue of of the uh, adjusting and timing I'm, I'm working on. But if this was a factory, uh, you know, sprocket for the cam, that little dowel at top dead center would be straight up and down. And, and you don't have to concern yourself with uh, how am I going to find the link, the shiny link here and the shiny link. Don't worry about any of that. All you got to worry about, top dead center on the crank, dowel straight up and down at 12 o'clock. Get the, get the slack out of the chain. Make sure it's rotating with no bound up links. And then use that little lever up trick and compress, fully compress the... Uh, the timing chain tensioner to get you to get just that little extra bit of slack and then up it'll go and, and you're on the road so and don't forget about that little nut down there more than one guy has uh, unbolted his cylinder head and yanked up with a pry bar and, and <laughs> forgot that there's a little front uh, bolt lurking in there so anyways uh, that's where we're at with the the uh, 22re uh, I'm like I said I'm gonna do the final uh, timing. I, I, I've done the rough timing on the cam. Now I got to adjust the valves today. Do the final timing on the cam, and then uh, start reassembling on this. Get my oil pan back together, and uh, we'll, we'll be firing up the motor here in no time. So yeah. So once again, a quick one-minute video I was going to post is now 17 minutes and 30 seconds. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> As I always say, I'm not known for my brief videos, but hopefully hopefully you've gotten something out of the video. And if you're timing or if you're trying to get your, your cylinder head back on your 22RE and wondering how the heck am I going to do this cam stuff, uh, maybe this will give you a little bit of a, a road map. So. Okay, as always, comment section is open. If you have any questions, I try to answer everyone's questions. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.